Hi guys, so this video is going to be my tips and advice for abstract reasoning. When I first started practicing abstract reasoning questions and doing them in mocks, I, I struggled and I think the majority of people will because it generally it doesn't come naturally to look for the kind of unique relationships that they often have in abstract reasoning questions. However, I found the more and more questions I did, the more and more relationships I came across when I looked at the explanation for the answer or whatever, the more kind of an idea you get of what the kind of relationships that are going to be with certain shapes. And I think it's really important, and this is my number one tip for abstract reasoning, whenever you come across a relationship that you didn't identify, or maybe even one you identified but you're not sure you'd identify again in the future, I would take a note of it. So, for instance, if it's, you know, the total number of sides adds up to 16 when you count black shapes as double or whatever it is, I would just write that down in a piece of paper and you should end up with a list of all different relationships that you've missed that you can then refer to and hopefully that can even just, you know, read that before you do abstract reasoning practice questions and you'll hopefully have a, a rough idea of some things you can look out for when you're looking at the question. And there's also a very useful mnemonic which you can look at, I'll put it on the screen, but it's kind of something you can have in your head when you're looking at abstract, que abstract reasoning questions. The time pressure is intense, so I wouldn't recommend you know going through this step by step, but it's something to have a rough idea of in your head. And if you're stuck and you're looking at a pattern and you've got absolutely no idea, you could try and quickly go through the scans mnemonic, uh, shape, color, arrangement, number, size. Um, but yeah, as I say, abstract reasoning it is, it is definitely weird. It does not come naturally, but I think it is definitely one which if you put in practice and you get that breadth of questions and you see the variety of different patterns, you really can improve. Because initially I struggled a lot. I maybe wouldn't even answer half the questions when I was doing the practice. But in the final exam, I got 830, which I was very happy with. And... I wouldn't have said that was lucky. I just, it kind of clicked for me once I'd done so many practice questions, I'd seen such a kind of breadth of patterns, I knew the kind of things to look out for. Now, just a little bit of specific advice for one of the question styles in the uh, complete the series pattern. When you have this kind of multiple shapes and it's going from frame to frame to frame, between each frame, always just look at how each shape changes. Say, for example, you have a white shape what happens to that white shape going from one frame to the next? Does the number of sides increase by one or does it rotate 90 degrees clockwise or does it move to the left and then swap between left and right? You know, take it by frame from frame, just go looking between one frame and that, looking between one frame and another, how does the number of shapes overall or the number of sides change? And then I try and identify the relationship from there. Only because of the time pressure and abstract reason, I would highly, highly recommend if you've looked at a question, especially the set A, set B style ones where you've got five questions, if you've been looking at that for like more than 40 seconds ish, I would just skip it because you cannot afford to waste time. And there will be some patterns that are incredibly bizarre or random and just very hard to get. So, yeah, I hope this video helped you guys. All the best for your test when it comes and I will keep making more videos to help you guys as best as I can.